Thank you. That concludes the debate on abortion services safe access zones Scotland Bill at stage three. It's now time to move on to the next item of business, which is consideration of business motion 13585 in the name of Jamie Hepburn on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a business programme. And I call on the Minister to move the motion. Move, President Officer. Thank you. No member has asked to speak to the motion, and the question is that motion 13585 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The motion is therefore agreed. The next item of business is consideration of Parliamentary Bureau motion 13616 on approval of an SSI, and I ask Jamie Hepburn on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau to move the motion. Move, President Officer. Thank you, Minister, and I call on Russell Findlay up to three minutes, please. Uh, the Scottish Government constantly tells us that too many people are in prison, but they never identify who should not be in prison, and they never identify which sentences are wrong. Every single prison sentence is decided by the independent judiciary, and the Government today will seek to undermine those individual decisions by ordering the mass emergency release of up to 550 prisoners. The Justice Secretary says she cannot build her way out of this crisis, and she is right to say so. But her government should have built replacements for crumbling HMP, Berlini and others. This is one area of neglect and during 17 years of SNP rule. Not only have they failed to build new prisons, they have also Mr. failed Findlay. to invest in meaningful community sentencing that can be trusted by the judiciary and the public. Presiding officer, the Scottish Government has been engaged in a soft PR campaign ahead of today's plans. Is there any time in hand? Keith Brown. Can I thank Mr Finley for giving away? I wonder if you'd acknowledge that part of the reason we have such stringent uh, capital controls is because of the decision of the Westminster Government, where the prison estate is in a far worse where the prison state is in a far worse condition in Scotland and there are far greater problems from overcrowding, can you not accept some responsibility from his party for the current situation? Russell Finlay. A, a, form, a former Justice Secretary, 17 years of neglect. This is, this is the same man who recently said that any prisoners leaving prisons in England might maraud across the border and commit crimes here. Not only have they failed to build new prisons, they have been embarked on a, a soft PR campaign ahead of today's plans. For almost a year, a procession of senior S SPS officials have been given freedom to speak to the media about the prison crisis. If only this anti-transparency government encouraged such candour across our public services. Many victims of serious crimes will first hear about this on tonight's news. This will cause fear and anxiety. Prisoners being set free will have committed serious crimes, including violence. When the government previously freed hundreds of prisoners in 2020, Victim Support Scotland called for victims to be automatically informed of any future release. Is there any more time in hand for another intervention? We have a little time. Thank you. Holly McNeill. Thank you. Does the member agree that this is an unsatisfactory way to deal with such substantive legislative issues? And that it has been very rushed, and now I only have a chance to speak by intervening on the member. But does he share Scottish Labour's concerns that the rising pr prison population was known about for some time? And if we are to agree to the release of up to 500 prisoners 180 days before their due release date, there is no guarantee that it won't happen again, as happened in COVID, that there was a high offending rate. I did find this a difficult decision this morning, uh, but does he further agree with me that victims' organisations don't seem fully satisfied that although victims will get notified if they're part of the scheme, the vast majority are not part of the scheme and they will not therefore be automatically notified. Does the member share my concerns about this and will the Governor's veto be enough as an extra safeguard for public concerns? Russell Finlay. 
completely agree with the member of much of what she says and also her frustrations about the, the speed of this and the lack of engagement that she's been able to uh, have. Um, returning to the uh, automatic uh, information passed to uh, victims, that will not happen despite Victim Support Scotland asking for this. Instead, victims will have to go looking for this information. They'll have to ask one of four designated organisations, Victim Support Scotland, Rape Crisis Scotland, Assist or Children First. These organisations will then need to ask the prison service. By the time victims get an answer, it seems likely that some prisoners will already have been freed. Five times this morning, I asked the Cabinet Secretary to clarify this simple but important point, but she failed to do so. And it was only yesterday that victims' groups were even given sight of the information sharing agreement. This is symbolic, and it proves that victims' rights are an afterthought at best. The government likes to take the moral high ground by preaching about smart justice, but it is not smart, it is weak. The emergency mass release will result in more crime. That's what happened the last time. We cannot support this, and to do so would be to fail victims and risk encouraging this government to believe this is the new normal. Thank you. Thank you, and I call on Angela Constance, Cabinet Secretary, to respond. President Officer, I am very grateful to both the Delegated Powers and Legal Reform uh, Committee, as well as the Criminal Justice Committee, who I have spent considerable time with this morning, uh, for their careful scrutiny of these regulations. And I am also very grateful to Justice Spokespeople and the individual MSPs and stakeholders who have engaged with me uh, on this matter and on the specifics of the regulations in front of us this afternoon. Uh, yes, we have have had to uh, move at pace because we have an emergency situation that we have to respond to now. But there has been parliamentary scrutiny every step of the way with these uh, regulations, and that is in contrast to the secret release plans that are taking place uh, south of the border. Yes. 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 Officer. I have and will continue to keep Fat Parliament updated of the position uh, that we face within our prisons and, crucially, uh, the actions that we are taking to address this. But despite uh, our efforts, the prison population has increased by 13 per cent since the start of 2023, with a spike since March 2024. This morning, there were 8,294 people in custody in our care. And that recent sharp and unanticipated rise of 400 more prisoners in a space of a few months now places the security of prisons and the safety of prisoners and staff at significant risk. I will indeed, Mr Green. Jamie Green. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for taking intervention? What percentage of our prison population are currently on remand? And if we got through those cases more quickly, surely we wouldn't have to release prisoners who have already been convicted? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Sign officer, 27 per cent of the male population are on remand, uh, and in any given week, the percentage of the female population on remand uh, varies between 32 uh, to 38 per cent. A remand population uh, is too high, and there are a number of efforts uh, to address that, including court recovery and our investment in alternatives to, to remand. But, Poseidon officer, I am very clear that I have a responsibility to act and that my appeal to Parliament tonight is that we cannot allow our prisons to become unsafe, and that immediate and urgent action is now needed uh, to ensure that prisons can still function safely and focus on those who pose the greatest risk of harm. Presiding officer, I very much recognise the public and victims' concerns about the use of these powers, and I want to emphasise that protecting the public remains my absolute priority. And that is why I have added additional extra protections and safeguards to the statutory exclusions that exist in the legislation that this Parliament passed last year. Only prisoners serving less than four years who are due for release within 180 days following the date on which the regulations came into force will be eligible for release. 
Modelling suggests that the majority of those eligible for release will be within 90 days of their earliest date of liberation and will be serving sentences that are less than two years. And I'll give way for the last time to Ms Chapman. Mikey Chapman. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for taking my intervention. I, I would just like to put on record that the Scottish Greens will be supporting this instrument at decision time late, later on because we are too concerned about the safety and well-being of our prisons, the prisoners and the, the people who, who work in them. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary to say a little bit more about that modelling. What modelling has been done on the impacts of, of this instrument, particularly on women and other vulnerable prisoners in terms of their safety and well-being? Cabinet Secretary. Sign officer, some of the modelling that I shared with the Criminal Justice Committee uh, based on uh, work that was done dated the, the 10th of June, so it is uh, indicative and it can change, uh, indicate that 70 uh, women would be eligible for release. That is 31% of the sentenced female population, and that is in comparison to 11% uh, of the sentenced uh, male population. Uh, further to the safeguards, uh, presiding officer, prisoners subject to the sex offenders register are not eligible. Prisoners serving a sentence for domestic abuse offences are not eligible. Prisoners who have previously served a sentence for a domestic abuse offence, if it is unspent, are not eligible. And prisoners subject to non-harassment orders are not eligible either. Further, a uh, Governor veto applies, uh, which allows Governors to prevent the release of an otherwise eligible prisoner if they consider they would pose an immediate risk to a specific individual or group. Governors will access a range of risk-relevant information from police, social work and other partners to inform that decision. I very much recognise that provision of information to victims is a particular concern. Victims who have signed up to the Victim Notification Scheme will automatically be notified, and we are working with victim support organisations to increase other victims' awareness of how they can access information if that is what they want. No thank you. The regulations name four victim support organisations uh, so that they can receive information about the release of a prisoner if the victim in their case has given consent. That is intended to support a more trauma-informed approach. Presiding officer, using emergency release is not a decision I took recently. I would not be asking Parliament to approve these regulations if I did not think this action is necessary to keep our prisons safe. I know at the end of the day we all want the same thing. We want fewer crimes, less victims and safer communities. And what happens in our prisons is a matter of profound public interest. Prisons are there absolutely to punish and protect, but they are also there to rehabilitate and reintegrate, and that has a direct bearing on public safety. We have 3,000 Scottish Prison Service staff who are operational staff and also prison officers, and each and every day they put themselves on the front line for us and the communities that we seek to serve. They need to know that we've got their back. They need to know that help is coming. And members, quite rightly, can critique the past. Believe me, I do. And we will indeed debate the future. And I know very much what MSPs are against, but we now need to show going forward in the not too distant future when we return to uh, Parliament after recess, we now need to show what we are for. But the question tonight is what are we prepared to do now, presiding officer? And I will just finally remind uh, members of the letter that I received from the Prison Governors Association that said to me they are only just coping and remain concerned that emergency action will only be taken when something goes significantly wrong. What we must do now is prevent something significantly going wrong. Thank you. Thank you. The question on this motion will be put at decision time. The next item of business is consideration of nine Parliamentary Bureau motions. And I ask Jamie Hepburn, on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, to move motions 13586 to 13594 on approval of SSIs. Move, President Officer. Thank you, Minister. And the question on these motions will be put at decision time. And I'm minded to accept a motion without notice under Rule 11.2.4 of Standing Orders that decision time be brought forward to now. And I invite the Minister for Parliamentary Business to move the motion. 
Uh, move, President Officer. Thank you. And the question is that decision time be brought forward to now. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed, and there are three questions to be put. The first is that motion 13571 in the name of Gillian Mackay on abortion services safe access zones Scotland bill be agreed. Now, as this is a motion to pass the bill at stage three, the question must be decided by division. And as members have been voting throughout the afternoon, I will allow a moment for members to refresh their voting apps. Today's pin is 4772. 4772. The question is that motion 13571 in the name of Gillian Mackay on abortion services safe access zones Scotland bill be agreed and members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on motion 13571 in the name of Gillian Mackay is yes, 118, no, 1. There were no abstentions. The motion is therefore agreed and the Abortion Services Safe Access Zones Scotland Bill is passed. Thank you. The next question is that motion 13616 in the name of Jamie Hepburn on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau on approval of an SSI be agreed. Are we all agreed? No. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we will move to a vote and members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. (laughs) 
I call Neil Gray for a point of order. Sir, apologies. Uh, I couldn't connect to the app. I would have voted yes. I can confirm that your vote was recorded, Mr Gray. The result of the vote on motion 13616 in the name of Jamie Hepburn is yes, 66, no, 47. There were five abstentions. The motion is therefore agreed. And I propose to ask a single question on nine parliamentary bureau motions. Does any member object? No member objects. The final question is that motions 13586 to 13594 on approval of SSIs in the name of Jamie Hepburn on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau be agreed. Are we all agreed? The motions are therefore agreed. And that concludes decision time. And we will now move on to members' business in the name of Tim Eagle.